Madam President, members of the court, there is an urgent need for provisional measures to protect Palestinians in Gaza from the irreparable prejudice caused by Israel's violations of the Genocide Convention. The United Nations Secretary General and its chiefs describe the situation in Gaza variously as a crisis of humanity, a living hell, a bloodbath, a situation of utter deepening and unmatched horror, where an entire population is besieged and under attack, denied access to the essentials for survival on a massive scale. As the United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs stated last Friday, and I quote, Gaza has become a place of death and despair. Families are sleeping in the open as temperatures plummet. Areas where civilians were told to relocate for their safety have come under relentless attack, bombardment. Medical facilities are under relentless attack. The few hospitals that are partially functional are overwhelmed with trauma cases, critically short of all supplies, and inundated by desperate people seeking safety. A public health disaster is unfolding. Infectious diseases are spreading in overcrowded shelters as sewers spill over. Some 180 women are giving birth daily amidst this chaos. People are facing the highest levels of food insecurity ever recorded. Famine is around the corner. For children in particular, the last 12 weeks have been traumatic. No food, no water, no school, nothing but the terrifying sounds of war day in and day out. Gaza has simply become uninhabitable. Its people are witnessing daily threats to their very existence while the world watches on." End quote. The court has heard of the horrific death toll and of the more than 7,000 Palestinian men, women and children reported missing, presumed dead or dying slow, excruciating deaths trapped under the rubble. Reports of field executions and torture and ill treatment are mounting, as are images of decomposing bodies of Palestinian men, women and children left unburied where they were killed, some being picked upon by animals. It is becoming ever clearer that huge swathes of Gaza, entire towns, villages, refugee camps, are being wiped from the map. As you have heard, but it bears repeating, according to the World Food Programme, four out of five people in the world in famine or a catastrophic type of hunger are in Gaza right now. Indeed, experts warn that deaths from starvation and disease risk significantly outstripping deaths from bombings. The daily statistics stand as clear evidence of the urgency and of the irreparable prejudice. On the basis of the current figures, on average, 247 Palestinians are being killed and are at risk of being killed each day, many of them literally blown to pieces. They include 48 mothers each day, two every hour, and over 117 children each day, leading UNICEF to call Israel's actions a war on children. On current rates which so, show no sign of abating, each day over three medics, two teachers, more than one United Nations employee, and more than one journalist will be killed, many while at work or in what appear to be targeted attacks on their family homes or where they are sheltering. The risk of famine will increase each day. Each day, an average of 629 people will be wounded, some multiple times over, as they move from place to place, desperately seeking sanctuary. Each day, over 10 Palestinian children will have one or both legs amputated, many without anaesthetic. 
Each day on current rates, an average of 3,900 Palestinian homes will be damaged or destroyed. More mass graves will be dug. More cemeteries will be bulldozed and bombed and corpses violently exhumed, denying even the dead any dignity or peace. Each day, ambulances, hospitals and medics will continue to be attacked and killed. The first responders who have spent three months without international assistance, trying to dig families out of the rubble with their bare hands, will continue to be targeted. On current figures, one will be killed almost every second day, sometimes in attacks launched against those attending the scene to rescue the wounded. Each day, yet more desperate people will be forced to relocate from where they are sheltering or will be bombed in places where they have been told to evacuate to. Entire multi-generational families will be obliterated. And yet more Palestinian children will become WCNSF, Wounded Child, No Surviving Family, the terrible new acronym born out of Israel's genocidal assault on the Palestinian population in Gaza. There is an Very slow, very, very slow. Very, there we go. All right. I just got to lift that. Before I take this off, this picture is my favorite right here in the rotunda. So I don't know. That's to me, that's the Canon office building, but this is a rotunda it's not the rotunda but here is anna queen of trades standing courageously determined determinedly in the center of one our one of our great institutions All right, everybody. Ace is live also. Well, um, I guess Ham can talk to both of us at the same time. I didn't know Ace was live. I, I'm not trying to uh, not trying to compete with him. I, you know, Ham's coming here. Um, maybe I can suggest to him that he could do a dual call, one here and one into Ace. Or he could just call into Ace and I can hang up. Oh, it's a members only. Well, members only, that's how he get makes his money, I guess. I got to learn how to do that, make some money, make some moolah. Um, a uh, Net, Net, Netanyahu, uh, you know, it, it might be it might be uh, a little bit too simplistic to state, but he created and backed Hamas. He <laughs> he he funded Hamas. So I don't think your simple I don't think your simple comments. They don't really ring true with me. I, I'm not saying that uh, uh, I have a, a full understanding of everything. The Middle East is very hard to understand, even if you try to study it, study it, study it. But make no mistake, uh, Netanyahu funded Hamas. Make no mistake of that. And uh, uh, if if you're including the radical right wing 
uh, Zionistic, genocidal Jews in that, as you're saying animals? You're calling yourself an animal. I don't know how you can back the murder of children. Skip the rest of it. Children. Thousands and thousands and thousands of children in Gaza Strip. I don't know how you can back it. Anyway, I don't want to start this call it off on a, a bad way. I'm just going to state that I think Abe Hellfish, uh, uh, you were you are one, you are absorbed with a level of hatred that you need to go get exorcised from your soul. And I'm gonna move on. Hey the one um DB, how are you? Ham is calling in. Thank God, Ham is calling in. All right. Everyone's dying to hear from you. Oh, I got a lot to say today. Well, I hope so, because uh, uh, Ace is having a call right now for members, too. Do you want to merge him in and also talk to his people simultaneously? It's probably the same audience, but... I don't know how to do it. <laughs> well, you just call them on a second line and then merge them. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We can go with this. We'll just go with this. I didn't realize he was on. I'm not trying to compete with him. No, we just, everyone, we just, William and I, we just speak in. I said, he goes, I'm going to talk. And I said, okay, I'm doing nothing. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. All right. So what have I learned since the last heard from me? All right. Well, this gentleman... Adam Long from Dorado Beach, Puerto Rico, happened to sell 6 billion shares of stock and made $20 million in profit. I don't know about you, but converting penny stocks seems to be very profitable when these shareholders don't know what's going on. Am I correct? Think about that. How many shares was it? 6 billion. And... In Puerto Rico, he's not paying any income tax, very he's little. He's not paying any in income tax. And the trades don't have a closing transaction anyway, so they're not paying taxes on that. Six billion. And I'll just go down the path. My friends in Puerto Rico know this gentleman. And this gentleman, as always told them, is just a, you know, cost of doing business when you do this stuff. So these guys have, so for everyone who doesn't understand, Mark Bazile always said it, they are unregistered broker dealers. Okay, they need to file to get a license. These guys are operating, you know, just think about a bank on the corner with no, with no license. This is what these guys are doing. And the reason they don't file to become, uh, file to be a broker dealer or a, a registered rep or whatever is because then they would have to show their cards of what they're doing. So they operate in the dark. And when you operate in the dark, you sell six billion shares and you print twenty million dollars. What do you think? So these, what do you think his average uh, revenue per share was? His average price. Uh, you know, to make twenty million dollars, I don't. I'm, oh, it's I'm, that's what he made. All right, that's what I was trying to figure out how much he made. Wow. You know, so one of my friends who knows the guy tried to defend him, saying, he, "I don't think he's making shorts." <laughs> so I said, "He's buying people. He's buying the debt, the convertible debt of a company." <laughs> and let's say no one knows what's going on, because the last funder didn't do anything devious. And let's say the stock is. 25 cents these guys get it drive it down to its lowest possible point and convert so it's the same thing they all they're all doing it's a debt spiral and they just convert it into a debt spiral the lower the stock goes the more shares they get it's the same thing over and over again and the poor shareholders of whatever stock that he destroyed lost everything but he wound up selling six billion dollars, six billion shares, and making twenty million dollars. I would do that any day of the week if I was allowed to do it. 
Well, he made 20, but maybe his partner in crime, a hedge fund, made 30 or 40. Who knows? You know what I mean? He might just be the, the operative. We Listen, we know that. There's more damage here than, than they tell you. We know that. Right. right. It turns out a good friend of mine, he gave me the symbol, and I'm not sure if it was reversed or whatever, but this this guy... Adam Long, that's his name, was involved in the stock. And I called my fr good friend up and asked him if he ever heard of him. And the first thing he said, he fucked him. I had, he, he was working with them on something. The stock was 17 cents. They drove it down and he wanted to sell it to them at three cents. So they manipulated the stock down. That sounds like what Alpine used to do to people, right? They front run the orders. They know you're a seller. They took the guy out at three cents. So that they all do the same thing. It's always down. How come no one ever makes 20 million buying 6 billion shares and the stock go up? Never hear those stories? Nope. <laughs> right? I told you over when I was on the Hill with Anna, one of those uh, hedge fund guys, no, that the CEO of Virtue, on Twitter typed that Anna was just a stupid retail trader. Well, these guys don't trade. They just steal. They don't take any risk. They just sell, listen, sell, sell. Listen, I was a professional trader. My friends are professional traders, professional traders. And they lose. They don't win all the time. Only in this day and age do market makers who have this that turn this loophole into a, you know, steal all you can and destroy companies as it as the world changed. So don't believe any, everybody loses. All right. It happens right. all the time. So if you see anybody winning all the time, Bernie Madoff, you know, there's something going on, right? Right. So how, how does Ken Griffin printing money? Stevie Cohen used to win all the time. What happened? They caught him inside of trading. He paid a fine. Now he cleaned up his act. And now look what he now look at the difference, right? Now hard it is to make money every day. <laughs> you can buy Bitcoin and they can drop it down on you. You know, you don't know anything. But these guys, these guys that make these market makers are the deck, the deck is so stacked against us, it's remarkable. Ray Mundo is asking you. Why rob bank banks and stick up gas stations when you can rob Americans blind with a nice suite um, on uh, uh, Madison the stroke, Avenue, a la the stroke, equities the market? Stroke of a pen. You sign this document, you can steal anything you want. Yeah. You know, just think about it. You can make more money with a flop than can you make with a hit. It's the it's the uh, the producers. Max Bialy stock and uh, Gene Wilder over there. I forgot his name, but uh, that's that's the game. This guy is living in Dorado Beach. House is at ten million dollars. William, you've been there with me. I was there with you. I was there b before. You in my walk life. around with your, your jaws dropping. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Isn't that the pattern? Look at how Mintz, the guy from Savvy Management, he got caught with a criminal naked short selling. Scheme, and he owns a ten million dollar condo in Miami on Fisher Island. This guy just stole twenty million dollars, and he owns a, a probably a mansion in Dorado Beach, living the life, walking around, beautiful. It's unbelievable. The Kramers have beautiful homes out in Long Island, but they hiding under their dad's name. And look at John Hurry. He has a bunch of houses. People put that up a long time ago. For those who don't know, that's the guy from Alpine. Just look at Ken Griffin. Go look at his homes. I called him Scarface years ago because no one buys homes like that. No one buys them like that. So, again, you're seeing different aspects of the crime. There's so much crime. I'm like, I can't. I don't even know what to say anymore. It's out of control. Uh, uh, someone put up a story. I think. Susan Trimbet, something in the UK, or I think it was Christian. Uh, the UK, they're losing faith in the equity markets in the UK. I put up in the US, we lost it many years ago, many moons ago. 
uh, again, it's it's remarkable that we have to watch it and see it. Uh, a good friend of mine, Lou, whose birthday is next week. Happy birthday, Lou. Uh, told me this morning, we had a call. He had a, a, a friend of the family that had $200,000 and she wanted advice. And she was going to put it into the equity markets. And he told her and he, she bought a condo instead. And I said, Lou, you just saved that woman's $200,000. All right, and that's and that's a fact. She bought a condo. She can rent it out. She can live there. Whatever she has to do, instead of trying to make more money and lose it, she has secured her two hundred thousand. And that's what I keep trying to tell everybody here. You don't have to buy stocks. I don't even want you to buy stocks, but you must spread the word that it's all fraud. The game is completely rigged, and that's what I and that's the message here. If you want to come out and play and listen to all the bullshit. Oh, this stock's breaking out. This one's doing that. If there's someone not fighting the fight for you, you're going to get killed. GNS, I spoke with Roger. He had the FBI guy, this, that, the other thing. And I, me and William both detected that he settled with the shorts. Remember we said that? Yeah, I remember it. The man with three first names, the he, drum major. He, he gets out in front. Me, me, me. It's my fight. I'm spending this on our fight. Uh. Jerk. <laughs> well, we caught him in a filing where he 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 settled with the short sellers, and at that point, I told everyone stay away from it because he settled. And what was the next thing he did? He raised more money. After the settlements comes more money, and it starts to repeat. That's the end of the game. So the stock was at seventy and eighty cents, holding up. What did he do? He raised money. Where's the stock? 26 cents. CEOs can't resist or they, right. they, they, they're afraid of leaving right. well, their, you know, their salary, their expense account, their retirement and health plans. To be honest, they'd rather sell out the shareholders and their lawyers tell them they should do it because how are you going to raise the money? You're doing this for shareholders. I, I'm starting to think, Ham, that the SEC should hold CEOs in uh, liable for signing toxic death spiral notes and put them in jail. Well, I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, gentleman uh, on Twitter, Richard, I forget his last name. I retweeted just a minute ago. He said, VOCL, look for the biggest reverse split in history coming up. Which one? Vocal VOCL. Uh well, talk about, uh, speaking of another CEO, go talk about that. I, listen, my friends gave the guy $4 million. I don't want to get in the middle of a fight. They probably want to kill each other as it is. But, uh, you know, he always said he wasn't going to reverse the stock. And now the story is getting around that he is. It was posted by him. So well, he said it's going to be the biggest reverse squeeze in history. Oh, I can't wait to see what happens there. You, you didn't think. mean reverse squeeze. You meant reverse split. Split, not squeeze. Yeah, yeah. Don't use that word. Never use the word squeeze. <laughs> Keep the characters. It is a reverse squeeze. Everything goes down. The pointing it down. You know, for for a guy that said that his toxic lender is a good guy, his stock is a half a penny. Yeah, how good are they? Just what? go look at it. He put up. Let's say he put up three million dollars into Vocal Lynn. He didn't get his money out, right? Right. That's a $3 million hit. How many people with small money with $40 million in the bank? I think that's what he had, right, William? I, I forget how much money he has. You know, how much money does Lynn have? Oh, if he had I, I if he saw, had I think it's less than $40 million. I think it's, so he yeah. Just lost three, he just lost $3 million to Vocal, $3 million. What is right. that, almost 10% of his fund? How do you, and yet Hancock is up 220% as Link Global Fund. Now, William, someone, you know, we just got on, I just checked before. Seeking Alpha did another story. Remember, what was that guy's name? I forget the guy from Australia. I forgot. Oh, no, John Hancock. No, the guy who wrote the story. Lynn. Oh, Mike, Mike. Uh... Dion, somebody. Mike Leon, name. Mike Dion, Mike. Uh, yeah, so Dion, Dion. I think it's Dion. Something. He wrote another story just now. 
spinning it around a little bit that it's getting better or their risk reward is better now. Also, he doesn't want to get arrested for what he I did put before. it up there that this piece of shit is from Australia and Hancock has his dirty fingers in this thing somehow. Who's covering this stock from Australia? Give me a break and putting it up on Seeking Alpha. Right. Hancock probably got this thing. Get that story out there. We got to get out of this stock. That's what he's probably doing. Do something. Because right. you know the roads are going to lead back to Hancock and it's up 220% investment. I mean, so I, I could put up the Pat Burn if anybody wants to take the time today. I don't know where you are if the weather's shitty. Deep capture the movie. Deep capture the movie. Pat Byrne goes through all the different phases, how they use lawyers, report, uh, reporters, you know, fake stories, everything to get to get this thing to, to to get you to sell and steal your money. It's a complete crime family. It's a perfect crime, as John O'Quinn used to say. The perfect crime. And if you guys didn't hear William talk about her, Ace or Honor and everybody else here, we would never understand it. But now you understand all the different little twists and turns. And there's so many more angles to this thing. You know, the voting, Susan Trimbath is yelling about the voting. You know, when you have too many shareholders, not everybody gets a chance to vote. So you lose your right to vote. I don't want to get deep into that part of the game. It's basically, we got too many, too many people own too little shares. There's 20 million shares. You can't own 100 million shares. The CEO of Rumble. For those who haven't heard, I've been speaking to him, and I'm not. I I don't give a shit. I just tell you what I what, what I spoke with him about. He can't get his head around it. He knows he's being attacked, but like everyone else, William, he wants me to show him the proof mm. that he's naked short. And I told him, "Good luck. When you get it, give me a call." Well, I, said, I would say to him. What Richard Hoffman said to me, um, it's not proof, but evidence can be circumstantial. Circumstantial evidence is evidence, and you can see it in the stock price. Well, I tried to tell him that, but he goes back to his lawyers and people that are not knowledgeable about what we're doing. Yeah, and the lawyers say, you can't say that because that's you can't prove I, it. That's that's what happened to MULN. I spoke to his lawyers, and I guess they talked him out of doing it when I told him to do it. And since that point, he's reversed the stock. Who the hell knows how many times, right? But that's what happens. So they all try to talk themselves out of it. This is Wall Street's dirty little secret. Not little. But is that, <laughs> well, it's not little, and it's a global secret. All right, but it's getting out there. And the more people keep talking about it, Save your friends, save your cousins, make sure they're not investing. If they get a tip in the stock market, try to tell them to be careful because 90% of the time you're going to get ripped off. Not that your information's wrong. I, you know, I could be completely wrong about that. But if you're buying a stock because the guy's got the cure for cancer or this or that, he may have it, the company may have it, but the crooks will destroy it because of that. So they you have a question a here. From Josh, he bought 30 ZJYL Friday. Is he a hero or is he a zero? ZJYL. Well, if, if he bought it below 80, he's a hero. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Listen, the, the best guy I know in the world that puts his money where his mouth is is in there. And he says it's going to the moon. So I can't, you know, I, I, I didn't buy it. William bought it. My friends bought it. Not I did very not much. Buy it. All right. I mean, listen, everybody's buying 30 shares, 10 shares, 20 shares, whatever it may be. You know, I, that's, you know, when the stock went to 300, my friend didn't sell it. He bought, he's been buying it all the way down. He also told me that they were, he was hearing they're going to do a forward split. I put up the filing. They're having a meeting to vote on the forward split. So if you're short 10,000 shares of CJYL, and the company does a forward split. That means they're adding more shares to the market. Very different than the reverse. If you're short 10,000 shares and they do 20 to 1 forward split, you are now short 200,000. Does everyone understand that? 
And if you ha how does that, that how much money do they have to have in the account against margin? Tenure? Everything gets everything goes the other they have to put up a lot more money because they're short a lot more shares. Most companies don't do that. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you most people on this phone never even heard of it. True. So again, a forward split is a very different situation. They know they have the shorts trap. So if they're short, is short a million shares multiply it times 20 now now they're going from 1 million to 20 million overnight the stock price is going to go lower but the share short will go higher so it becomes a bigger mess overnight so use 80 dollars how much how, how much money did the shorts have to have on account when the hey, listen that's their prime broker but then you know i don't know how many shares they're short but the, when the stock is higher there's different there's different numbers they probably had to put up a lot of money due to volatility right yeah yeah so now that the now the volatility is going to get the volatility is going to get less but they're going to be short so many more shares right so if they're short a million shares they're going to be short 20 million shares overnight so I don't know when that shareholder vote is. If you go to OTC markets, you can see the filing there. It's I think it's uh, January 29th, Hong Kong yeah, time. So, right. Yeah, so they're going to vote on it. You know it's going to happen. So that'll be the end of that. I told you the other day, Interactive Brokers, there's 1 million shares in the float. Interactive Brokers is offering 1.1 million to lend out. How's that one? Yeah. My friend well, go through, through those down. numbers. It's... The the float is one point three, and they own one point three, and they're taking out five hundred thousand of it. So the float's going to be seven hundred thousand, whatever it is, right? Yeah, and uh, seven or eight hundred, seven or eight hundred thousand, whatever. They had the five they're taking out, so that gives you one point three. And now they're going to forward split it. They just they're trapping these guys. Just, so they, when when does the buy in? When do the back offices start buying in after the forward split? Well, they have to or sooner. They have to, they have to get it approved first. Right. Nothing can happen till then. But if you're short, if you're short a hundred thousand shares, I can see them starting to say enough of this thing and get me the hell out of it. So the st I don't see where the stock closed. If it was if it was eighty dollars, I guess divided by two, the stock would open up at uh, six. No, 20, 20, 20. 20, 20. It's twenty to one. Twenty to one. So let me figure out. So twenty. Eighty divided by twenty. The stock would be four bucks. You got it. And when the stock goes up to five. All right. Think of the number. It's going up twenty percent a day. It's going to kill them. And if it once it's four bucks, I, I would guess that the prime broker would require at least five dollars a share, probably more like ten uh, for the. And and, and they got to multiply it, whatever it was times twenty. Right. Exactly. 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 Um, so we address this guy Adam Long. He's the same character as Hal Mintz, same character as the Kramers, the same character as Alpine and, and uh, Yorkville. And I forgot the other guys, they were from Brooklyn. Uh, they got sanctioned a while ago. Anyone has any questions about toxic lenders, just go on Twitter and, and ask Mark Bazile, the Bazile law firm. He knows all these characters and uh, you know he, he, he'll address it and get back to you. We also found that information this week from a shareholder in Long Island that the Kramers have a lawyer. Uh, his name is up on Twitter. I forgot the guy's name. I'm sorry. That is the guy working on them trying to open up a new Alpine, a new prime is broker. Is it Nadich? Is it Nadich? No, it's Corsair or something like that. I forgot the name. It's on Twitter. Someone put it up there. It's up there already. I forgot the guy's name, but he's a real dirtbag. He was a former SEC enforcement guy before he became an attorney on the outside for all the toxic lenders. Mark Bazile knows him. Everybody knows this guy. He's a real scumbag. But he is, uh, I passed his name to the FBI and the SEC, excuse me, the, uh, not the SEC, to uh, the Secret Service already. 
And, uh, you know, th- th- these guys, don't, they, they just trying to, if they open up their own prime broker, no one's ever going to see what they're doing, like Alpine, right? Right. They're doing stuff behind the closed door. That's why they're trying to, Alpine's going out, they have to find a new home to do their, their dirty business. And now, now they haven't put it, I heard they haven't finished it yet, but the Kramers were putting up $4 million, he said. They were raising 20. The Kramers are putting up four to be part of the new prime broker. These guys are so crazy. They don't even care. They just want to keep stealing. I told you before, if I stole two million, I'll be gone. Am I just stealing whatever they're stealing? I mean, these guys are nuts. I guess they just don't care and they need to be put in jail. That's just the way it goes. <clears throat> Any questions, Wayne? Yeah. Um... Uh, what's the difference in maintenance on a 1 million short compared to a 20 million short? I, you don't know for sure. It's I, just they, listen, it's the prime broker makes up those numbers. That's why stock loan and prime broker services is the wild west. It's unregulated. It's the wild west. If it was regulated, Alpine would have got dragged out with handcuffs when the short, the concentrated short position in GTI screamed up and they had no money to hold on to the position. If the DTC was actually going around and doing things in real time, they never would have let the stock go up without them covering, you understand? Um, you may not be fully aware of the this situation, but the question is, does this trade station situation potentially increase the speed and size of a settlement for MMTLP? I don't know about the size, but it will make it. it they have no choice. You get you, That's the game. I've always put up the little graph of the circle with the DTC in the middle of it and then all the firms around it. It, the number, if you can get the number at those firms, you know it's at the DTC. So Trade Station had 200,000 at the DTC. I forgot the number. And let's say you find 350,000 shares that are owned. There's 150,000 counterfeit right there. Trade Station is a small player, you know. So imagine getting E Trade and Ameritrade, all those other firms, to give you that number. That'll give you that. That'll give you the big numbers then. Um, RW is asking if you have an update on Apple Larry Thomas ALT. No, I do not. It's a fat. It's a it's a what's it called? Uh, a D spec. No, it's a uh, it's a it's a uh, obesity drugs thing, something like that. that. There's been a whole bunch of good stuff on it. It was up to eleven and a half. It went from five to five fifty to eleven and a half. I don't know about you, but. Uh, I would have been gone along. I would have been gone at ten. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we can remove that. All the stuff on that stock is out there. Go to Bloomberg. They're talking about the story was that Pfizer is looking to buy these guys because another obesity drug company got taken over for a lot of money. That's I put it up there a while and I forgot all the names. Here's a question that I think both both misses the point and on the other hand maybe is important i don't know i i'm not going to answer it but you can is there something that gtii management can do to force brokers to deliver to us the dividend shares it's been months and no. nobody has theirs no no that's legal stuff that's what wall street's about congratulations now you know what it is <laughs> your own bro- your own broker is robbing you. The company can only do what they're doing. The brokerage firms are not doing their jobs because the brokerage firms are now short the dividend to you. Because if they did their jobs, they'd be going to Alpine and the Kramers demanding delivery on their record date, but they don't care. And now it turns into a mess. And that's the key. Um, that guy, uh, RW, did buy, sell the stock at 10 and three quarters. Do you know George Sharp? No, nope. I know Frankie Dull. I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like returning to Richard Hoffman now. <laughs> now you're you're uh, less funny than Richard Hoffman. I have a quick pickleball story I played this morning. 
and I walked onto the court and there was a woman, maybe 70, 72. She, she, I walked out, two men and her. And I said, well, I'm the worst player here. And she looked at me, she goes, I don't want to play with you as the worst. I says, I, I winked at her. I says, yeah, just come with me. Don't worry about it. So we played and she was standing uh, by William after when you're serving, the game goes on. She was standing up near the front line. You know, they call it the kitchen near this line. Yeah, yeah. I, I hit a ball past her, whiz past her. We were right past her, 200 miles an hour. She turned around. She goes, how did you hit that? I said, I don't know how I did. I just played stupid. And I was like, I don't know. Like, she couldn't believe it went past her that fast. It was like a plane went past her. <laughs> what if it had hit her? I, I, thank God I didn't. Her name was Sylvia. I was yelling, Sylvia, great job. Nice job. And you know, I was like a ringer behind her. She had no idea because she didn't turn around. She had no idea what I was doing behind her. And she caught wind of that ball going past her. I, I'm telling you, she almost jumped out of her shoes. <laughs> um, uh, just a funny story. I'm sorry. Uh, Listen, everyone, I keep, putting, I keep putting, I put the pictures up. I, I can't, I, I like Lou, I did, like, I was proud that the guy Lou saved his friend from putting $200,000 into the equity market. You know, he, he begged her and told her to stop. Don't do it. And she didn't. And that's what the, and that's what I'm trying to do more than anything else. I don't care about these these guys stealing. They they all belong in jail. They know it. And the, the government will eventually get them. All right. But as far as I'm concerned, if you could stop your friends and family, just get away from it until the dust settles. You got to get away from it. If you're up. And you, know, you got some, you know, your own caterpillar or apple or all these things, you know, it's. It's time to move to the sideline. It's a very dangerous time in the equity market. So I do believe the shitty names that we follow will go up and the good names are going to go down shortly because things are starting to unwind. So you got to be careful. So you, you can sell and buy back. OK, our names have gotten hit from these attacks. I think they're going to turn when the market goes down. I think these stocks are going up and I think that finger motion I think there's news that will drive this thing higher and we'll just wait to see what they say when they come out. That's it. Your opinion, Ham. Since Congress has no legal authority and the SEC is helping FINRA hide evidence of naked shorting, what would make naked shorts give up billions in profits which they got from shorting MMTLP? Will we ever get a settlement? If if you told me there was no one making noise, I would tell you you would never make it. You would never you would never survive. There's so much noise now, and the people that are fighting is just out of control. If you, I go on Twitter and all I see is MMTLP, evidence proof, and it's you know Charlie Payne sees it. Everyone knows it. You know, I'm sure that when you were walking around, you know, the Capitol building the other day, there was people that know the I name. Was, that it, heard was, it. it was that actually, I wouldn't say night and day, but it was like late afternoon versus early morning or something like that. Going into the offices with Anna, every, everybody knew the story that you didn't have to educate them. They're, they immediately asked, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to sign the letter? You know, what's your ask? How can we help? It was it's an amazing difference in attitude on the hill. Well, again, every day MMTL people, if you speak with them, get a new group of group of people to walk the halls, tell the story, and it just keeps there's a sixty-five thousand of them. If if three or four or five of them land in DC for two days and just go around and hand out the same literature and educate the people, it's gonna come to a head. It's going to come to a head anyway. I do believe it's going to, they can't hide forever. This is this is the government regulators. They can't keep. They just can't make believe not that it happened. You know, it's just unbelievable. So Steve asks. He he says he's usually quiet and listens, but he is vocal in his local circle, his local community about the fraud. Does that help at all? I think it does. But what are your thoughts? Telling your friends about it, I think it's huge. 
Was he he's vocal about what? He's vocal about the fraud with his oh, local no. community. I, I just told you Lou from Brooklyn made my day today that he saved somebody from putting two hundred thousand dollars into the market. She was looking for help for him to help her navigate the equity markets, and he told her point blank, Don't you dare go buy a condo. That's what he told. <laughs> And that's what needs to happen. Everyone needs to stop doing this stuff because you just keep, you know what? Again, if you tell you me, and Steve like, should meet up. Steve tells family, friends, coworkers, barbers, waitresses, tattoo artists, the guy next to him at the hockey game, anyone who will listen. You, you two should meet up. I, you, I don't know who would listen, will bump who'd into talk. Each other. We will bump into each other at one of those events. He will tell me. Oh, well, well, I'm getting my tattoo, my new New York Rangers tattoo, and and uh, go to the game. He'll tell me that's what will happen. Um, th say hello to say hi or hello to Celeste. She's listening. And Celeste, it's Saturday. Go enjoy your day, please. <laughs> and remember, use your ear earmuffs when I uh, when I'm speaking all the time. It's, I'm always I'm not as pleasant as I am right now, so. The market's closed, so I can actually take my catch my breath and go through it nice and slow. But have a great day, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Education, Celeste. Yeah, well, you're Celeste gonna, you're gonna is the best. It. Celeste is going to be the head of Goldman Sachs one day. This education, she will be. She's too honest to be the head of Goldman Sachs. She'll have to start a new bank. Right. Um, uh, a lot of questions about GTII. Trento, et cetera. I don't know if you want up if you have any updates on GT. Well, I, I I have no knowledge of Trento. Uh, William, you met with people that actually are doing mining stuff, and you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could tell. I I know nothing about. I I couldn't. You know, I've never seen a mine, so I have no, I've never owned a mining stock. Know nothing about it. I don't know how they're valued, but. I'm told, and Williams had firsthand experience that people actually are bringing something to GTII, and whether the company can close out the transactions up to them, I don't know. I have nothing to do with that. Well, we, I can, I'll try to talk after Ham well, you're talking is about done, Miami. but I don't. Yeah. If I talk now, Ham will get bored. So you got to hundred percent, a hundred percent, you lose. <laughs> I don't control any of it. If I can't control it, what am I going to talk about? Is it got a deal that can happen? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. Can they get it together? Who knows? I don't know. I don't. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. Um, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you saw it, um, and I could put it up, but this, why, Johnny Tobacco put up that, um, 21,000 shares of MMTLP with GTC orders. And the level two showed prices of 1,000 to 2,000 in the pre-market on the 9th, December 9th. You call E-Trade or you, or you, I guess you enter it and you say, cancel the sell order. They come back to you and say, it's too late. So they're saying it's too late to cancel. Your orders have already been executed. Number one, is that true? Maybe that's an assumption. The prints are shown, say you now have $26 million richer, and then poof, your trades are canceled and the money is gone. So my- Does someone have, does someone have proof, that, proof that that happened in there? Well, he, he included a picture. And the point is, my question is to you, and I said it to Hannah, I didn't know that this was going to be out in the public, but I guess Johnny Tobacco put it out is what if FINRA stopped trading after trades happened pre-market and in the morning? Those trades, how can they cancel trades that already occurred? Yeah, I don't think they can. And if they, if they did, that would seem to be the starting point for a fraud settlement, $1,200 a share. If someone has those statements that their account was executed to trade and then canceled, it would show up in their statement. That's my understanding. That's what happened. Money showed well, in the account and took a couple of days and then it was on wow. Well, if someone has the proof of that, that's that's pretty big. I think it's 
if it's true. As soon as your trade, when your trade happens, it'll show up on your, you know, on your platform, whether it's Ameritrade, Fidelity, it's right there. So again, if they canceled it, you got good evidence right there. Let me ask you this, in because I know my experience, but I want to ask your experience. When a desk comes back and says too late to cancel, does that mean the trade was executed? Yes. Yeah, see, I agree. I agree. All right, assuming Ham has a lot of information he can't share, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I don't follow pro football. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, somebody I, I, is I asking. Follow college football. I follow college football. I follow. If you look at my tweets, I'm retweeting things that are happening at Florida State right now. That's all I do. Um, <laughs> uh, blind man walking. They can do whatever they want. I don't. I don't think. But they listen can. I, again, everybody. I, I, you, 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 you got the picture. They can do whatever they want. All right, and that's why I'm trying to tell you to stay away from stock. They're not in the front line of the fight. And you say to me, "Well, what do you mean by that?" Well, Rumble. Okay, he's on the complete attack, but he's at the stage right now. The CEO, he doesn't believe that how big the naked short could be in his company, although he's watching the stock get destroyed and he has no idea why it's going down every day. They did a short and distort report against them. They actually sent the, they're sending the SEC after him for some fraudulent press release that he put out. And he told me that he just got the documents, the numbers from Google. Google supplied the information to his firm, for whatever press release it was, whatever it was. So here's a guy who has 260 million in the bank, has a platform, very political, I guess, and uh, you know he's under attack. He has no reason for understanding why. And I told him if he has to start fighting back, I'll see you in the never. You'll be gone. You'll be wiped off the planet. So good luck. So that's he actually said the stupidest thing in creation. He said that he has enough money. If they knock this stock down, let's say to 25 cents, he could buy the whole company with that money. And mm. what would you say if you were the short seller, short at eight dollars, and the guy's going to buy the stock back at a quarter, William? What would you say? Help. <laughs> if I was the short at eight dollars, because that's his average price on the short side, I would tell him go pound sand. But I, are you crazy? The short sellers, if he ever made a bid for the company at a dollar and they're short at eight, they'll make seven dollars and he'll close out their positions. They would love for him to do that. It oh, puts yeah. the game, it, it puts it, it puts the game away and they go to another stock. Thank you very much. Hey, we didn't make eight dollars this time. We only made seven. And that's that's what Roger Rabbit or Jeremy Frommer will say. Hey. We got you 25 cents. You know, the stock right now is under a penny. We got you 25 cents. That's a win. And the guys will go down on and kill another company. Well, I'm just going to show you that this CEO has got $260 million in the bank, a business going on, and he has no idea what's going on in stock. Zero. I educated him for two and a half hours. All right. And I did my best. If he chooses not to do something, you know what I did. I like this then quote. He was, yeah, sorry. Then he was nice enough. Let me just finish. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We were talking about it, and he told me that the biggest shareholder in his company is Dan Bongino. Well, if that, if that wasn't a sign from God that someone is looking down on us for us, I'm not a holy roller, but you know, I do believe that somebody's doing something to enlighten us here. Well, I met with Dan Bongino because I was sent to him by another Secret Service man to go discuss something with him. And here we are two months later, Dan Bongino owns 5% of a company, 5% of 200 million, he owns 10 million shares of a company and he's down $80 million in his position. So my message to my Secret Service guy is, hey, 
my motive here is for one thing is to stop the fraud and make money financially to support my family. 100%. I'm here to earn money. All right. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not, I don't need a medal. I'm doing this to support my family. And if you think that, that I don't have a motive for that, you're nuts. So if you think I do have a motive and you don't like the motive I have, go help the people in Rumble. I have nothing to do with that company. I could give a rat's ass. I know nothing about it. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service man, highly regarded. And if you can't get him to go in front of Congress and speak, I don't know what to tell you. There's your perfect guy. He's a gift from the gods. I'm teaching you about the naked short selling. And here's your own buddy getting killed by it. You got the whole deal. Talk to each other and get that up on the tape. That's what I told him. If you do that, we win anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. That's what I told them. Because law enforcement always looks at you like, oh, they're just trying to manipulate their stock. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything in this thing. So go ahead, go do that one. It almost ma doesn't matter which stock you pick. They're all manipulated. And I'm going to, I believe I'm having a meeting with the Secret Service this week. I can't tell you where and when, but I'm told it's this week. And my message is going to be in front of all the agents and their analysts who are working on this thing. Don't investigate anything. As a matter of fact, everyone, I just need you to go out and have a press conference and just say that if we catch you counterfeiting the U.S. equity market, that is counterfeiting a financial instrument, we're going to put you in jail and treat you like a counterfeiter. And you'll go to jail for 10 years. End the conversation. And when and we will find you, okay? Because this is going to be an active investigation. Thank you very much. Drop the mic like everybody else does. The rap is a walkout. That's all he has to say. Don't say anything more. Let them know there's going to be jail time behind the counterfeiting or naked shorting of the equity markets. That's all they have to say. Then just go wait at the airport and you watch all the criminals running around. That's all you have to do because they'll be running out of town. Then and get then, get the IRS then, to say we're going to go after the tax cheats. And then and then you can actually do what? Give the names. They actually have the names of Lynn Partners and his little married people with him. They have the Kramers. They have Alpine names. I don't know who the short is in Rum. I don't know who the short is in MMTLP or CELU. Oh, CELU I do know is uh, is Yorkville Wolf is Yorkville and you know. This character, this guy Long, who just got caught with the six billion dollars, six billion shares. How come they never tell you the name? Isn't that strange? Isn't that they never give you the names of the stocks that got people got ripped off in? It, the only name you ever get is GTII, which is impossible that somebody has a concentrated short, an illegal concentrated short position, and it's in a court document for people in GTII. I, I just have to tell you, that is the number one, that is the number one uh, scoop or proof that you can get is right there. MMTLP has a lot of great things, the messages, the text messages and all that nonsense. All right, they have good stuff. But the number one in proof is GTI. I've never seen that in 24 years, never. Our uh, finger in GTI is still life-changing opportunities. Uh, no, I'm, I, I, I completely gave up on that. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Be I careful. That they'll have that. They'll have that all over Twitter. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. That's why I'm here. And the only reason it's a life-changing event is a thank you to the SEC and that in the depository trust. GTII, they told you right there, it's in the court document. I'm not making it up. Concentrated short position in Alpine. Alpine is a fraudulent prime broker. Who, who uses Alpine? Crooks. Who used Alpine? The chairman of DBMM told us Kramers. Kramers were locked into Alpine. Alpine gets busted. What do they have? They have a concentrated position in GTII. Then, uh, there you go. It's right there. So I like this guy's quote. He points out the London's metal exchange canceled executed trades in the nickel market 
to save a yeah, Chinese probably, billionaire. Yeah, that was a big short squeeze, right? I remember that. He, uh, his quote, I like his little summary. If no one stops them, they'll do whatever they want. And I, no, that's yeah, I agree with that. But this is at such a high level at MMTLP. They're at the government level already. So any transactions that were put up and were, you know, put up, taken down, it's all evidence to show the Congress said, look, these trades happened. A short seller panicked, bought the stock, and now they wanted to cancel the trades. And they canceled it because the short seller lost on it. And that is complete fraud. They're going to go to prison, not jail, one gentleman points out. Uh, they belong in Rikers Island, but I think they're closing Rikers. They're closing Rikers? Yeah, so maybe we'll send them to Angola, which is... Maybe they can just save 10 cells for the Kramers and the Lynn partners. And there's the... so many of... The, listen, there's so many of these guys. This guy... Adam Long, I never heard his name until yesterday. Hal Mintz, we heard his name. Yorkville, Lynn Partners, Alpine. All of a sudden, we, we went from one stock, we got 40 criminals now. It's just, it's endless. Endless. And if you think you're smart enough to go around and trade and make money in this market, good luck. I focused all my efforts on two names. I, I tell you little tidbits about things I hear in different names, but I, I can't I can't defend those names. I know nothing about it. I you know I put the time in in these two. If you want to go study it, go study yourself. But I put the time in this one, and the things that I'm saying can be verified. It's right there. You, everyone tried to get a dividend. The company gave out a dividend. No one can get it. Well, it tells you there's a problem, right? I told you that. If they can't if they can't deliver it to you, why not? They get dividends every day in all stocks. How come this company has the biggest problem? This little small company has such a big problem. MMTLP is just a fraudulent dividend. And they can't even everything. It's a dividend. They can't deliver it. I told you dividends is the problem. And people go, Well, we want instant gratification. Hey, people, no shit. So do I. But you have to trap them first. That's how this game is played. You have to trap, expose them. They've been trapped. They're exposed. And I believe we're in the ninth inning, bottom of the ninth. When I first started this, I thought I was in the bottom of the ninth 24 years ago. Little did I know we were just warming up. We didn't even get to play the game yet. That's how long it's been. But it's very different now. Um, one, one guy is saying, love you, Ham. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I listen, I thank everybody. I, I listen, I'm just, I'm just repeating stuff as a guy that's been informed and hopefully everyone understands it. If you don't understand it, just ask. It's easier to go through these conversations. If you know what, I wish we could have had a conference call when I had the CEO of Rumble on. You guys would have got off the phone and said, is this guy an idiot? That's what you would have said. Great guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that that's how educated I feel everyone here is. Based on the questions that I hear, based on the questions that I hear from everyone, that you guys are much more educated than the CEO, you know, has 300 million in the bank, has a business, everything's going great. You know, these the short sellers wrote a report. They sick the SEC on them. I says, oh, you get the full, this is the full court press to try to get you. I says, whoever want, whoever's going after you wants you to be gone. So you can either fight back now. I says, I gave you gold. Call, I says, call Dan Bongino. Tell him to call my buddy up or, you know, our mutual friend. Give him a call and get the game going right there. If you can't handle that, I'll take care of it. In which case, I said, I reached out to my guy and I'm going to go see them and tell them about Rumble. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and after and after they get the guy in Rumble, once they once the Secret Service comes out and says, "Hey, this can't, this will not be tolerated anymore. Counterfeiting of a financial financial instrument is harmful to investors and to the United States." End the conversation. Boom. And all the things that have happened since I've been speaking with them is what South Korea, Thailand. Uh, Christian put up the story about India. 
I told you they attacked the biggest company in India. They, you know, and now they won the case against Hindenburg, which is just you remember these guys are just throwing shit against the wall. You know, if you you want to go out there and write, go out there and write. Boeing is a company, a airplane company that is, you know, is cutting back, and because of their cutbacks, planes fell out of the sky. The doors are falling off, and you should only buy Airbus. And anybody at Boeing that is part of that putting these planes together, they should be indicted for fraud and you know murdering people. Somebody you could put that. Uh, somebody at Boeing was, or left Boeing was quoted. An engineer was quoting and saying that Matt, Boeing Max at seven, whatever it is, Max plane was designed by clowns and. Uh, overseen by monkeys or something like that i mean so these people bump. they should just get rid of that max plane take the loss and right. start over oh they keep trying to repair it so here it is these companies should be punished for it instead they were holding the stock up at 120 the other day or 220 i forgot the number where it is and I, you know, I talked at Avid about it and i'm saying i i wouldn't buy the stock I, it's got it's got to go down there's got to be more bad news and uh, Wall Street's the first that company has bad news. Ah, it's over with. Let's get back to it. That's it. Jeffries has Jeffries earnings were down 53%. And the stock doesn't go down. Figures motions earnings are up 70% and it's down 50, down 70%. Tell me, tell me, tell me what you see. What's normal about that? That's not the equity market. Am I correct, William? I don't remember ever being like that. No, no, this isn't the equity market that I remember at all. Somebody told me the other day I was speaking with I should that we should just invest in mutual funds and ETFs. Well, I'm not sure about that either. I I think that's all going to collapse as long as money is flowing in and they're buying those top seven stocks. I personally think the stock market can go a lot higher now. But oh, at some the, point, the, it's going to collapse and it's going to come down. You won't believe how quickly. Right. Once you live to a crash, I lived through the 87 one, the 2008. I can't remember. I can't remember. I know there's another one in there somewhere. 2000, like maybe. 1999, I 2000. I remember buying plaques on the street. People were taking photos of their Quotron. That was our trading platforms back in the day. IBM down forty-four dollars. Apple, this one down fifteen, down twenty-five, yeah. thirty dollars. All the stuff, all yeah. of them were down yeah. like that. Fifty bucks, thirty dollars, eighty dollars. Yeah, everything. Um, it's I'm a good sure time if you have cash to buy, but they'll go to numbers you won't believe. And uh, but uh, my opinion first, we're going. I uh, we could be up fifty percent from here. I think we're going to blow off. I, I wanted to tell you about the, the market me. crash. I was working on the option desk when the market was crashing. And I was thankful that I was flat. I got out of all my positions at the time when the market got crushed. But it, I, I, I have this girl in Kentucky called the desk up and she bought 500 puts at 25 cents for $25 a piece for a client. She bought them in the morning. I think the whole trade 500 was at you know twelve thousand dollars. I think she put up. I sold those puts out that afternoon at four o'clock. I think I sold them at sixty dollars a piece, and she made millions of dollars. That's how fast the market was going down. And the panic, and to buy to buy protection, of because they needed to hedge their portfolios. The funds were buying puts, trying to do anything, and that was the panic. And this girl came in. She made millions of dollars. She retired the next day. He said, take it easy. And that was the end of her. And I executed the order for her, both in and out. And when they sold them, I couldn't believe it. These are the same ones you paid a quarter? She goes, yeah, I couldn't believe it. We had the opposite happen with an association, all the retirement funds, big, big money. They had sold puts. They were doing it every month, uh, selling puts uh, short, you know, short. and. Uh, the, the, they were wiped out, left the office and the firm with a massive loss, which had to be covered by the firm, by the way. That's, it happens all the time. And I told you, all it takes is one time. You know, that's why option call buying or put buying 
you know what risk you have because it's you put up you only buy you only lose what you put up when you start selling short or selling puts to open you get killed it happens all the time uh should we spec uh, expect some kind of halt we never heard of in either finger or gtii i don't know i don't think no, so i don't think so I don't, I don't think so. Think so. Um, the only halt we want to see is that when they halt the stock because they, uh, they're they dragging the criminals out and we have to stop trading so we can watch them do the perp walk with their jackets on their heads. All I want um, them to do is when they, I want them to do when they do grab them to make them take their uh, mugshot, putting their finger on the tip of their nose and pushing it back so they look like pigs. Because you keep stealing from people, you stole, get a, you robbed the bank. Don't come back and rob other banks. You're gonna get caught. There's such pigs. They're coming back. They want to steal. But they want to break into the fourth bank, the fifth bank, and the piggy bank. They don't even care. They're just gonna keep going. So, so, um, uh, what if GTII went private? It would be Dole Fruit Foods, right? Or what would happen? <laughs> be nothing. <laughs> who's going to who's going to enforce it going private? That's why you don't do it private. You want this to, this game has to play out on the battlefield. Unfortunately for everybody, we don't want it to go private and deal with it in court systems. It'll take a hundred years. You understand that, William? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sue is urging me to call it counterfeiting, not naked shorting. So I hear you. I hear Thank you. you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. William, I have to always smack him in the head. He always keeps trying to change it back. He keeps trying to make it a nice name. It's counterfeiting, counterfeiting, counterfeiting. Yeah. They're creating shares that don't exist. Go out and try to create money that doesn't exist. You go to jail. A T-shirt, you go to jail. Super Bowl tickets, you go to jail. Anything you counterfeit, is is it's bad. Only in the equity markets is considered good, but they change. They don't want it to be called counterfeiting because everybody knows that word means bad. Yeah. Um. I guess my computer is overheating. I gotta get a new computer. Um, I'm having a hard time looking at the comments, but it's like so. There's nothing trading. Well, keep looking at it, William. I think it's unchanged. This is the only time my stocks remain unchanged is when it's not trading. As soon as the stock opens up, the first trade is always down, down a penny, down a nickel, down a penny, down a penny, down a nickel, and there's always a seller. That's how yeah. you know it's fraud. There's selling. Every second of the day, this isn't this isn't Bitcoin.